Hello, Awifians. We are back and we have the next speaker already online all the way from South Africa. Let's see, Brigitte, if she's here. Yes, she's ready. Just give me a few minutes. So we're switching language now to English. And now all the way we go to South Africa. Hello, Brigitte. Hi, Lillian. How are you? Great to see you online. Great to see you. How are you? I'm very well, can't complain. Just very, very, very hot in Cape Town. You're lucky. If I should just flip my screen, you know, my, my camera around, there's so much snow, you cannot even begin to imagine. Oh my goodness, it's completely the office of opposite. I'm sort of feeling like I'm frying in the in the sun here. <laughs> How are things? How are things over there with COVID? How is the situation? Um, we're sort of in, in, you know, the second wave right now and, um, things are a little bit, a bit hectic, you know, our, um, healthcare is starting to feel the, the brunt of it. It's overtaxed. Um, and, you know, we're being, most of us are being very, very careful because we understand that the dangers of COVID, um, but you know, it's, it's such a difficult thing, Lillian, you, you trying to balance, um, keeping everyone safe and healthy uh with not locking up the economy it's it's a fine balancing act i think a lot of countries are struggling with that to be honest difficult times yeah difficult very times. very difficult you know how do you how do you keep the economy open safely without um putting everyone else at at risk yeah yeah you know it, it, it's difficult not not an easy task and i must be honest i don't think i want to be in the shoes of any particular um ruler at the moment who is having to make that judgment call yeah you know yeah. none of them they're trying to make the best decision possible and you know when you live in a country like like South Africa, where you have such vast differences, uh, economic differences. You know, lockdown for, for the haves is very different to the lockdown for the have-nots. Yeah, because yeah. Those who are in a wealthy position, doing social distancing um, is so much easier. They've got a, you know, they've got a larger home, they can move around, um, you know, they perhaps have a situation where they may share an office, but they've definitely got enough bedrooms, they've got a lounge, they've got a kitchen, they can move around with freedom, they've got access to technology, you know, whereas people in the lower end of the economic scale don't have access to technology, they may not have the ability to work from home. Yes. They yes. in a situation where, um, you know, you have up to, we have homes that people live, 10 to 15, 20 people in one confined space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you apply social distancing in that kind of scenario? And these are people who more often than not don't even have a choice to work from home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you then, as the leader of a country, make a choice to be safe and appease an entire population when you've got such a lot to juggle? Yeah. Well, no, no, no one has the answer. I mean, I think all the everybody's just trying to do their best, and we're just hoping that uh, we'll stay safe. Many people will not lose lives, and uh, yeah, the economy. No one has has the answer. No, yeah. definitely not. And, so, and, and the thing is, it's such a moving target. You know, there's yeah. there's um, things can change literally overnight yeah. yeah and you know, you've got to constantly adjust and 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 re reevaluate exactly and this is such you know it's such a good timing looking at your topic of discussion how do we level up with our engagement with live videos during such difficult times when things are difficult yet we know we are supposed to pivot because life will never be the same again 
But how someone who had an office job, who left home, you know, your home was probably not safe. Someone who uh, did not have a good standard, you left home, you went to work and life was okay. And now you have to still perform at the same level. Those who are running businesses have to pivot to something that they've, they were not prepared for. How do we start using live videos to up-level our engagement? That's a very good question. You know, um, I would I would also want to say that for a lot of people, pivoting is more difficult than for uh, for others. First of all, if you had the technology already available and you simply had to make some adjustments, it could have been easier. But you know, imagine if you were going into an office every day. Um, that's different. Your children are at daycare; they're at school, and now you at home and you're yeah. having to adapt <laughs> yeah and and on top of it you can't send your children to school if they're at home with you yeah um you know and if you've got a partner at home and you're both trying to work from home now you've got to decide who well who's going to keep the children entertained or quiet and you've both got a meeting schedule there's a lot to consider you know mm-hmm. and 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 the other big thing that I think a lot of people didn't consider is you may have had access to to bandwidth or the internet at home, but that was for recreational purposes. Yes, <laughs> it's not for professional. <laughs> no, so that's been uh, an additional cost factor for for people, and um, you know, here in in Africa, bandwidth is still at a premium. It is not that it is not that cheap, and not everyone, you know. Especially if, we, if we're talking about live streaming, for example, and you know who is not on Zoom. I, I must tell you a little story. You know, um, one of my my co-hosts on a show. She's got a little. I think he's seven now, and you know he ran into the room one day. And says, "Mom, mom, I've got to get online. I'm late for my Zoom." <laughs> Could you could you have imagined, you know, a year and a half ago, a child running in and saying, I'm late for my Zoom? Yeah. Never in a million years. Yes, yes. We, we shielded them, we protected them from online, and now we are now pushing them, go do your homework. <laughs> I yeah. know. And, and all of this takes bandwidth, you know. Yeah. And yeah. something that I think we have... We didn't plan for, you know, I mean, this was sort of pushed on on all of us at the last minute. Um, and, I, you know, people now talk about Zoom fatigue. Yes, I've heard that. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and, and what that is about really is that, you know, if you and I were having a conversation um, in person, I would focus only on you, right? Yeah. And and when you're having a real in-person conversation, you focus on more than what the person is saying, right? Mm-hmm. You focus this visual, this other visual cues that you that you concentrate on. Um, you know, a person's facial expressions, mm-hmm. um, their body language. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you, you know, when you're having a conversation with someone, you can tell whether the person is present or not, right? Yes. Just yes. by looking at them. You can tell when someone's a million miles away. Yeah. But you focused on only one person, yes. right? Yes. And, and even then, it's, it's if you're really, really present, even then it's a lot to take in if you really want to have a meaningful conversation with someone. Now, Imagine you trying to do this with 10, 20, 50, 100 people all on one screen. You know, if you're trying to read all those visual cues, but think about where I'm trying to go with this. Um, People who are not aware of what it takes to do this, So now you have a situation where people are on Zoom and they're not trained. Yeah. I don't think companies have taken the time 
to give their employees the training that it needs to be online. It's not a matter of just switching on the camera and there you go. So you, you get situations where uh, because people don't have the necessary training, um, they do all kinds of things online, which is very stressful for viewers. Mm. Uh, you know, one example for that is the moving target. Yep. <laughs> someone, someone joining the live stream on their mobile phone and they think it's okay to move around. Mm. You know, so you're trying to not only listen to what that person is saying, you're now trying to take in their background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and whatever is happening in the background, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you kind of lose focus on the main topic or what the person is actually saying. Mm -hmm. um, or, or somebody gets up, you know, or they're moving around, or you can see they're trying to grab something to eat. Um, and then, of course, my absolute favorite <laughs> is, is people trying to use a green screen without knowing how to use it effectively. Yeah, we're all trying to pivot, you know. <laughs> we'll get there <laughs> you know people who don't understand how green screens work um and they try and use one and then they're wearing green and all you see is their head yeah. moving bobbing yeah. around on the screen yeah. yeah um yeah you know so there's there's so many factors that were not accounted for that people are struggling with um uh, with with live video and and hence the term that's been coined you know zoom fatigue yeah. But this brings us to something beautiful. It opens up other areas that we could explore, other businesses that could be created. Because before Zoom was dumped on us, people were going live. And which brings us to the quote of the day by Jay-Z, who says, I do not know where streaming will go in the future. The analytics that we're seeing tells us that streaming is the next thing and downloads are going down. This I had to trim down because it was too long. So we've been streaming for no good reason. Some people like you and I, we've been doing it on a professional base. And now we know that there is a huge market behind this. We've seen you and I in groups where people are asking for help. Who can do this? Who can do? We see jobs being created. And that's where you and I come, we come in. So tell us, why is it important for businesses to start engaging with their audience or clients using live videos? Well, you know, Lydia, in, in, you know, or anyone watching this, imagine being able to broadcast your message, any message, to people who are already online. They're already consuming video on the go. You know, everybody yes. is now familiar with live video. Yes. But then you have the opportunity to direct the attention of those people to your business, to your website. Um, you may have a cause that you're passionate about. You may have a charity that you're passionate about. Um, you may have written a book. Um, so wherever you wish, you now with live video have the opportunity to direct people's attention to whatever it is you wanting to do. And then imagine being able to change or tailor your message according to um, the business needs at the drop of a hat. You can do that with live video. Mm. You know, if you if you are a store owner, for example, and you have a product you now have the ability to push through um, online specials to your yeah. clients. Yeah. You know, with traditional TV, you'd pay quite a pretty penny yes. to get access to that kind of audience. And not everybody may have had the ability to do that, but now you do. Yes, 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 exactly. There are so many things now we could, you know, do with live videos at very minimal cost. But what is live video? Live video, I'm going to use traditional video as a, an example. Television. Everybody knows what television is. Um, and that's also known as broadcasting, but more specifically, it's one-way broadcasting. So information is pushed through to the audience, but the audience has got zero ability to impact um the the broadcast or to give feedback or 
input of any kind. Also with traditional broadcasting, like in the television, uh, everything is usually, or most things are pre-recorded mm. and the emphasis is on, on, uh, on perfection before that is pushed through to the audience. But live streaming, on the, on the other hand, is a two-way broadcasting. It's completely different. Still broadcasting, but it's interactive. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and, yeah, and the emphasis is more on being real and authentic and less polished, less of a perfection, because that's not what's there. You want to... Or with live video, you've got the opportunity to now be engaging. You can you can um, you can interact with your audience. You can show with the technology that we have. You can show comments on screen, for example, and people love that. And I want to use the excellent example of why live streaming is not going to go away anytime soon, and why you should embrace it. Um, there was, you know, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Mario Armstrong. He launched the Never Settle show. And he describes the Never Settle show um, as a web television series that provides advice and tools um, to help you hustle mindfully and to pursue your passions. Now, the Never Settle show with Mario Armstrong won the very first Emmy Award for a live stream show. No way. Yes, so this is serious business and it's not gonna go anywhere. So live streaming is very much a serious contender in the broadcasting yeah. industry. And it is just growing. Now, just to give you an example of where this is going, um, you know, a bit of history of, of, of live streaming. Live streaming started back about six years ago with, with Blab, it was a, Yes, yes. A video platform. Yeah, yeah. Yes, a video platform that was interesting, informative, and educational. And people could meet up with friends or colleagues and gather information and hang out. And then one day, unfortunately, the, the, uh, the, the uh, producers of Blab shut down the platform and everyone was at a loss. And then in 2016, in October 2016, along came BeLife TV. And there was this huge happiness amongst the live streaming community. But, but before people, then, there was Periscope, I think. There was Periscope, yes. There was yes, Periscope, and it. there was still Periscope. I think I know some people are still on Periscope. I, <laughs> yeah. And Periscope, by the way, is also going to be mothballed. So it'll be the second huge platform to be mothballed. That's okay. going to go away at, at the end of March. Oh. Yeah. But uh, Twitter, Twitter bought Periscope, so yes. um, so you know, so basically, Twitter does the same thing. So you can go from you at the moment you can stream directly on Periscope and Twitter at the same time. So it's not a huge loss. It's, you know, it has a different feeling to it, but um, we ha we do not have a lack of technology for streaming at the moment. We've got such a huge choice and just talking about the growth um in live streaming you know i mentioned how be live tv came along as you said we had blab we had periscope and then um we had be live tv who is still going strong still a, still a, a huge contender but to give you an example of the growth um you know after be live tv there were so many others and one of them being Streamyard. that's just two years old yeah, StreamYard, Ecom, um, York, so many, so many. So many, you know, just so many. But you I'm, know, just, I'm just native Facebook, you know. We do, not, we do not even need to use all these tools, just native Facebook or native Twitter. It works. It really works. Absolutely. There's, there's, a, there's such a huge choice, and each one of, each one of the, the platforms – um, caters to different needs because not everyone's the same, not every business is the same. So you've got to do your homework, really, yeah, yeah. and and discover which of these technologies fits in with your brand and um, your abilities, and and how uh, and where your audience is. Yeah, exactly. So there's no there's no point in 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 going into a direction where your audience isn't isn't going to be. So just you know, find out where your audience is. What is your audience like? Yeah, yeah. So from your example, from your experience, what are some key points to work on before we start engaging 
through live video because it's very important. If you have it, you're doing it just for fun, that's okay. But as a business, what are some key points we should look into? Well, first of all, you've got to, there's a, there's a couple of things. One is time, you know, figure out how you're going to fit that into your marketing strategy because nobody wakes up just one day and say, okay, well, I'm going to start live streaming for my business. It, it it doesn't work that way you know you've got to take a lot put a lot of planning into it um do your research um find out what technology is available as i said earlier and then find out what are the resources that you are going to need um to make this happen um you know do you have access to the bandwidth that is required. Mm -hmm. And something a lot of people don't know is, and, and I find this with guests all the time, you know, because of our history with television or um, watching shows on Netflix or YouTube, for example, um, and I know I was in that position as well before I got into live streaming, everybody sort of, a, you know, I've got plenty bandwidth and they focused on the download speed because that's what you were doing, you were receiving information but when you're live streaming you need a good upload speed. yeah 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 so that is something you need to be aware of you know people are not aware of that um that you need a, a very good upload speed if you want to be streaming so preparation um being consistent don't just dive into it haphazardly because once you start live streaming you want to be consistent if you want a following, you need to know that whether that's going to be once a day, uh, once a week, once a month, bi-monthly, it really doesn't matter. But you want to build up um, some kind of consistency so that your audience know when they can uh, expect you mm -hmm. to be online, you know. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I've learned, for example, um, and I think almost all live streamers have learned is to think on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we almost become experts on thinking about you know yep. when it comes to the ability to be flexible and think on your feet because yep. it's not perfect. Like you know when uh, with the television production, you've got a huge production team that makes a television show happen. Exactly. Yeah. Live but streaming with, on your own. <laughs> you, you on your unless you have a producer, and that's another thing um, that people need to know. If you are watching the show, um, you don't necessarily, if you're wanting to start a live stream for your business or your brand, you don't necessarily have to do the production part yourself, um, because we now have options. There are. There are production services, people who will do the technical bits for you and you can simply focus on your um, on your content. Exactly. And that, that brought us to a discussion mm -hmm. and a plan because we are not seeing enough. We, we had an example of basically job offers and there was really no one offering, you know, it was there. And we came to a conclusion that why don't we start something because we don't see Africa representing itself. We'll get into that discussion in a little bit, but let's just take the comment, one comment here, which says, thank you, Brigitte Limbanda, for this very insightful discussion. That's Modi, she is in Belgium. I, I could not hear you. Oh, you're, you're muted. Apologies, apologies. So yes. that's, you know, it's a pleasure. It, that's why we're doing what we're doing is to raise awareness um, of live streaming and live video and what is possible with it if you're wanting to um, raise awareness about your brand or your business or your charity or your cause. Um, it is something that you can do and you know previously this was not accessible to us at all um, but the technology has evolved over the last five six years to the point where you could now actually if you had the bandwidth first of all you had the knowledge you had the, the technology available you could actually produce a live stream show that is pretty much on par with a television show yeah you can 
Yeah. But there are two sides to this coin. There is, we are talking of businesses that already exist and have the means for it. You could really go in full and have a real production and reach more people than you would do normally. But there are also the people who have um, no idea on IT, on the IT side of things and also do not have the means, neither do they have the knowledge to pivot. So it's really, there is a fine line between somebody who has the means and put all what's necessary because, you know, this is an opportunity to even gain more clients. But what about those who are struggling to pivot, to understand the the, uh, the IT side of it? How do they get around this? The way to get around it is definitely to engage the services of a remote live video producer. That's the way to get around it. Um, you know, of course you can learn the skills, but not everybody wants to learn the skills. Yes. And, and, and even if you are going to get into it and you're keen on learning the skills, there's a learning curve. Yes. And it's not going to happen overnight. Um, yeah. You know, it should never prevent you from getting started. Um, you know, if, if I look back at my very first, live videos i want to cringe <laughs> don't talk to me about it <laughs> i kidding. absolutely want to cringe but you know this is as one of our streaming colleagues says if you want to write a book you've got to have a chapter one right <laughs> i look at some of those live stream and i'm asking who's that <laughs> <laughs> I know. I want to hang my head in shame, but you know, I, I, I've kept, I've kept them. You know, I mean, I, you, have, I have the option to delete them, but I've kept them because there's still so many people that need to enter this arena, and they need to know that it's okay to not be perfect in the beginning. It's very okay. Yeah, you know, that's it. That's it. That's it. You know, um, when my daughter is also trying, we're struggling to do her live stream, and she said, "Why don't you just do a video?" Then it's and I said, "But that's what everybody is doing. They are doing videos in places that do not belong to them. They rent the place. They take a nice shot. But today we want to see where you live, how you live, and what you. I mean, are you practicing what you preach? You know. So live stream has. I mean, it's it's the market is huge huge but we have to start we have to put in the effort if you don't have the means you have to learn the skills and you do not have to spend that much at the very beginning but you really need to get in the business because i don't think there's going to be a, um <laughs> there's there's no going back there is no going back. absolutely not and you know one of the reasons i like to remind people why you need to get into live video is um you know there's there's a lot of competition out there. Yeah. There's there's a lot of people, you know, unless you have something that is extremely unique and that's rare, you have got to vie for the attention of people. And you can use live video to set yourself apart from your competition because, you know, I know it sounds cliche, but people buy from people that they know, like, and trust. That is just... Yes. Yes. the bottom line yes. and so with live video you can pull back the curtain on who you are as a person um you know so that people get to know you your personality the real you so that whatever and then the product becomes irrelevant you know what mm -hmm. you sell doesn't matter then because people will buy because they have come to like you and they've come to trust you mm -hmm. um and so you can do that very, very quickly with, with live video. And here's the thing that you also need to appreciate about, appreciate about live video is that it literally is business without borders. Yes. You're breaking down, you know, the confines of your four walls, that pretty little office that you had. You're yes. literally opening up the walls. You're collapsing the walls of your business. And you're not only exposing yourself to people in your in your immediate community or your your town or even your country, you're now literally opening up your business to the rest of the world, and that is a phenomenal um, opportunity that would have cost you a pretty penny on television back in the day. Yeah, 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 
10 grand, you know, it's a, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot. Yeah. Now, in the context of Africa, why aren't we seeing enough of Africans live streaming? Let's not even go to the quality. Let's not go to the content. Why is Africa not showing up? We've spoken about, the, you know, access to good internet. Why is Africa not showing up? You know, Lillian, if I have to get real about this, I think there is a somehow a, a lack of confidence. Um, and somehow people have a feeling that they're not good enough. Um, you know, there's this perception that only goods and products and services that come from overseas or you know that are sourced internationally is 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 good but it's it's such a misconception yeah there are such amazing people in africa you know that have produced goods and services that are world class and there's really no reason for us to feel that we are not up to par um and that's one of the things i've seen with with live streaming you know because I've been streaming now for over five years, almost six years, and having met people from all the corners of the world and seeing what they're doing, there's no reason for Africa to feel that they are less than. In any shape, you know, we've got every reason to feel proud, you know. Um, but and is, it, that is, it, is it only that or is it because of the cost that comes with it? Because there's, there's also the, there's also the cost factor. Um, absolutely, if you look at the exchange rate, um, you know I often I often listen to people providing goods and services from uh, from other countries, and and most things are based on the US dollar. And if you had to consider the exchange rate that we have to buy goods and services at. Um, in Africa, most times those things are completely unaffordable. You know, people will say, for example, you may need X amount of services and everyone said, well, it's only $10 or it's only $100. But once you convert that into currency into Africa, it's way outpriced. Now, I, I have seen that in some instances, uh, people have made allowances for that, but not enough. I'm still not, I'm not seeing nearly enough of that. So, so products and services are unaffordable for most people in Africa based on the US dollar. How do we turn the table around? How do we, I mean, get the mass to start doing something because yes it's uh, the, the prices are rather expensive for the normal african but this is an investment that has to be made on a governmental level as well there are some countries that we've heard of we see them on the map but they, they are absolutely not represented on the internet how and it's such a it? shame, you know, it's this such a shame. Thing. This is the thing. How do we get to let the government even, I mean, from a governmental point of view, talking about tourism, let's forget now there's COVID and everything. COVID will be over one day. How do people come to your country? What have you been showing the world about your country? There is nothing, nothing. So how do we turn this around? How do we start educating people on the importance and essence of live streaming? By doing what we're doing now, <laughs> by doing what we're doing now and doing more of it on a more regular basis to create um, awareness to, to, so people can see that the, you know, the technology is available and, um, and perhaps people who have access to or, or, or have the ability to provide the infrastructure can do so. Um, you know, I think I think there needs to be a lot more giving back. Um, you know, something that I did 
I don't know, I think maybe two, two three years ago, I interviewed um, a lady who talked about the wealth that is available in, in Africa and how that is used globally. Um, and so one of the other things I think that could make a difference, Lillian, is for the international market to to not, you know, I often see people coming here, for example, and they're trying to haggle with our people about prices. And that yeah. is so, un that is so unfair. It, it is so, they try and beat them down. And, you know, considering the exchange rate, it is so incredibly unfair. Just pay people a fair rate, you know. Um, something that I can get almost, very emotional and tearful about is is the fact that you know a lot of the minerals that's used all over the world comes from africa you know a a a, a motherboard that is used in all the technology you know a motherboard is used in almost everything and the 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 minerals that's required to produce those things come from africa and a lot of those minerals are conflict minerals, you know, where children as young as four years old are used in mines. People are not paid a day's wage. You know, so a lot of the things can be turned around if the rest of the world only pays Africa what they should pay. Um, you know, no one, I mean, we use smartphones. Everyone uses a smartphone. We wouldn't have a smartphone if it wasn't for the minerals that come from Africa. <laughs> Think about that for a moment. And yet, the people who live here can't afford one. How yeah. insane is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, then Africa should stand up and at one point, you know, go live and show the reality of things. Show we do the need to do more of, of that. We need to do yeah. more of that. And we've come up to an idea with an idea of uh, a monthly show where we help African women go live. We set everything up. They don't have to have be live or a stream yard. We're going to provide that. We come here with our expertise and we help them to tell them what equipments they need, how they should, just to get them started and move them forward. That's the only way, you know, but the problem still that I see, we are going to do this is because it's not leading to any financial win quickly, we might not make it as much as we dream. The problem with Africa very often is they want it now. Now, because of the poverty level, we want it now, we want to eat now, food is a necessity. There is very little long-term planning in Africa. We are going to go up uh, with this plan but we need to take this to another level. So anyone watching this as a as a live watching this live or as a replay, we call on governments to come sit with us and tell us what they need without asking for money, of course, because money is hard for everybody. What in the form of giving back as services, as our time, as equipment, so they could represent their country. Let us know. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, um, and it, it really doesn't take, if you want to incorporate live streaming into your business or your marketing plan, you really don't need a lot to start off with. You can really just start with um, with the basics, you know, and, and if you're a small business anyway, start with the basics and you can always build up. You know, I didn't have a great camera when I started. I didn't have great lighting when I started. I didn't have the ability to use a green screen when I started. <laughs> There's a lot of things I didn't have. But, you know, if I didn't start at some point, I wouldn't have been able to grow to the point that I am now. So um, just get started is, is yeah. basically what I would say. Yeah, yeah. And let us know how we can support you. Let us know how we can, you know, help you take that leap of you know faith just just start doing just start start and we'll help you we'll guide you to to maybe be able to do the live streams yourself 
but it's so important for you to start your live stream if you've not yet done so. Absolutely. And, you know, just reach out to us in the comments if you'd like to know more, uh, you know, if you'd like to know how to get started, leave a comment if you're watching this on demand at another time. Um, let us know and, and we'll reach out to you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. There is so much. I mean, just it, take an example. You, you, We really do not have, need great light or great camera to show the crops that grow in Africa. You know, some people don't know where plantains come from. You know, why don't you have an agricultural, you know, channel where you really show what's really happening in Africa, the organic food that Africa has. Absolutely. Cool. Plenty of opportunities. If you've got a mobile phone, you know. Exactly. If you've got a mobile phone, you have it already. Because people are using that mobile phone to, you know, watch other stuff on YouTube. So why don't you use it for your business? And, you know, it's amazing if one if one simply takes the the, the time to do it and you, there's so much you know I, I saw something the other day that really warmed my heart there's a couple of youngsters that shot a, a a short movie simply using their mobile phones but it was phenomenal that it was actually picked up by an international um, filmmakers and you know so it's it's more about having the will to do something than having the technology yeah yeah, yeah. Because if there's a wall, there's a way. Yes, yes. And I've seen great, great movies shot by with a mobile phone coming from Nigeria. So people are, you know, people are walking behind the scenes. Brigitte, I think it will be time for us to share with the world your some of your work. Video into your marketing strategy. Every day, you're competing with thousands of brands. One way to stand out and show your authentic self is through live video marketing. Embrace live video marketing into your marketing strategy and get people to know, like, and trust you. Who doesn't like a good story? Stories are a great way to share your products, goods, and services with people and for them to get to know, like, and trust you. So incorporate live video marketing into your strategy. Start somewhere, but start. You can start building an online community and following one video at a time. Don't try to be amazing, just try to be helpful. Be Live Media advocates for responsible social media and responsible live streaming. I'm Bridgette Limbanda and we'll see you in the next broadcast. There we go. Thanks for sharing that, Lillian. You're welcome. Yeah, I mean, so many businesses are really not present online, which is a shame, you know. Gone are those days where we use email as the only source of marketing or sending letters or phoning people. Now it's really happening through videos, through live videos, and uh, it's time for Africa to show up. It's time for... Um, for us to start engaging, we really need to take that leap of faith and just throw ourselves out there and try. And in 10 years, you look at it and say, just like me, you say, who is that? <laughs> You'll be laughing at yourself. <laughs> and, and, and I'm going to say, if you want to get into live streaming, learn to laugh at yourself. Don't you take know? yourself too seriously. Absolutely. <laughs> the very first one you're going to make up like mad thinking you have to do great the next one you're thinking okay just go there deliver your content and get out of there <laughs> and it's really not you know if any of you sort of thinking i can't do that you you eventually learn it's not about you no you know it's not, it's not about you people are not looking for a polished perfect you you know if you have value whether that's content uh, or a product or a service that's all people really care about people are not going to focus on your makeup not being perfect or that you're not wearing a Carducci suit or whatever you know that's not really what people care about just provide them with value 
And by the way, if you're thinking your makeup is not perfect, you can't do it, you're depriving other people, you're making other people's things stuck because you are not showing up. You're telling them they must be perfect before they start. And it's absolutely not correct. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely not correct. Someone out there is waiting for you to make that mistake for them to get the courage to start. And and can I tell you something something strange? You know that people when when you focus on perfection too much, I have seen in the last five six years that the the, the live stream videos that get the most views are where people have were imperfect, <laughs> where they've made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. because then it's relatable. That's what you yes, want to do real, with yeah. live video. You want to be relatable, not yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Not perfect because there is no there is no such thing. There is no perfection. That would be TV, right? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> we just said live stream, you know, videos, live videos. We didn't say television. <laughs> it's <be> live. <laughs> <laughs> the real thing, live, you know, real live. But what are some of the mistakes that you made that you think you you can really pass it on to someone else to tell them not to try to avoid these mistakes? What are some of the mistakes you made? Um, some of them, there's so many. There's so many mistakes that I've made. Um, you know, not being... Focusing too much on what people may think of you. Yeah, yeah. I think it's one big mistake. You know, um, I focused a lot on that in the beginning. I was I was constantly worried about what people would think about me. And when I finally started to relax and realize that it, that's not why people are coming to watch my shows. It's not about me at all. Um, you know, focus on focus on on the value and the content. I enjoy uh, doing talk shows, for example. I love interviewing people, and um, you know, showing sharing their value with the rest of the world. Um, and if that is something that you're wanting to do as part of your broadcast, for example, then that's going to be a whole new show. Is is just learning the techniques of of um, of getting through a show. You know, having a plan, having an introduction, having the body, and then having a call to action at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I did. I didn't have that kind of structure. We didn't have when we started live streaming. We there wasn't much available in terms of training, for example. But many people we haven't won it before. Many people we haven't won it. Wing it. We, yeah, we were winging it in the beginning. Yeah. Really yeah. winging it. Yeah. Yeah. Many people hadn't done it before. So that's, that's perfectly normal, perfectly okay. But now things are uh, improving and there is no excuse. The mistake I, I had at the very beginning, which I think I, I should have, I don't know why, I was worried about my accent. It's amazing the kind of things we can be worried about. Um, and I'm here, yeah. you know, I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think if uh, that was not when you said your accent. I thought seriously, it's n your accent n never even occurred to me because so you know if anyone <laughs> out there is worrying. You know, if you're worried about it, somebody like Brigitte did not even think of it. But it was in your head. How do you pronounce this? Do they understand me? You know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's little things, you know. So don't let anything stop you. And 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 I know I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say we need to, as they say with Nike, you know, be like Nike, just do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's just do it. Get on with it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a long way to go. And again, my only fear is that Africa is not jumping on this boat and again will be the last on the list to get on the trail. So we're going to do our best to get women on here. 
government officials, let us know how we can support you. Put your programs out there. If you look in every developed country, their meetings, everything is now live. It is live. Stand up to the task. We're here to support you. Message us anytime. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, in terms of, of audience, there's a massive, massive international um, audience that you can reach with live video. Um, and I want to just end up by using one platform, for example, that most businesses or serious businesses are on anyway, and uh, and that is LinkedIn. You know, there's yes. currently there's currently 50 million companies registered on LinkedIn, and they have 260 million active LinkedIn users. Africa and the Middle East has got 61 million users. That's a huge amount of people. Um, in, in, in South Africa, there's about 8 million LinkedIn users. That's a huge market that you are missing mm. if you are not live streaming. Mm. You but know, not everybody so, is able to live stream on, on LinkedIn. You are the first African to be able to live stream on LinkedIn. Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> and again, you know, that's one of the things, uh, you know, I, that didn't just happen. I asked yes. for it. Yes, yes. I remember. You know, if, you, yeah. if you want something to happen, make it, make it happen. Um, I, asked for it. I asked for it and they didn't reply. So I don't follow shining objects. You know, I stick to Facebook, stay here until the very end. <laughs> And, 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 you know, talking about social media platforms and, and, and live streaming, something you also want to consider is that you want to make sure that your investment in live video is also on a platform that you control. Um, you know, make sure that you can upload it to your own personal website. Yes, you want to put it on Facebook. Um, on YouTube, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, or wherever else you can stream to. But make sure that you have a copy of that video and that you also put it on your own personal website so that you have control um, over it. Because okay, you but, that, always... but, but I, I get your point, to embed it on your website. But then what all we all are chasing is the likes and the views. If you embed it on your website, you're embedding a link or are you embedding the video itself? Because when the you embed the video itself, it has not no a link. It you, has don't no want, you don't want the link. You want to actually upload that video to your website, the actual video. Because what if, you know, you, we don't own LinkedIn. We don't own Facebook. No. Um, we want to make sure we have an actual copy of the video that we can put on our website that has no dependency on any other platform um because you know it's an investment yes. and, and and when it comes to video content you want to produce content that's that's evergreen and and, and something that people don't realize often is that when you produce long form video you can create thousands you know lots and lots of short form videos yeah and repurpose those yes so don't think that it's a one and done it you know live streaming is not a one and done it's something that needs to be done with consistency um but know that if you produce a great long form video you can cut that up into lots of smaller videos that you can use for advertising um you know on different platforms so also, yeah that's the whole topic on its own <laughs> Yeah. And the podcast, the podcast. You can, yeah, you can strip the audio. A lot of the streaming platforms now um, offer you the ability to automatically do that. Yes. They will already separate the video and the audio for you so that, that you can use that in a podcast, you know, but that's a whole different conversation because, you know, you also need good um, audio to be able yeah. to use that for for a podcast mm -hmm. um and and you know you also reach a different if you do that you're basically doubling up on on what you the the time and investment you made on your live video yeah. 
if you can repurpose that as a podcast, you're reaching a whole new audience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because people may not, even though there's a huge market for live video, um, people can consume your content as a podcast while they cleaning their house, doing the dishes. I do that with books. Or no. <laughs> audiobooks so 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 realize that it's not just live video you can double up on your efforts by turning it into a podcast absolutely absolutely we are going to work on that we're going to bring more people into this we're going to train more people as from next month once a month we come up we tackle one idea on live streaming the importance tools etc etc and we'll see what happens and we're going to contact people to help them, you know, go live, help their businesses go live. You just have to show up with good internet connection and we'll help you from behind the scenes. So we're here, Brigitte and I, message us if you need that help, we are here for you. Brigitte, what is your legacy? What's that legacy you're working towards to uplift Africa? I want to be able to um, use live video as I see it as a tool, mm. as a means to an end, you know, um, and, and, and not trying to, as you say, chase shiny objects. Mm. Realize that live streaming is really just a means to an end. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tool that you can use to, as I said earlier, break down the walls yeah. and make your, your goods and products and services known to people internationally. Some of the people I've spoken to um, that are coaches, for example, as well, you know, if you do coaching, instead of just, you know, and in any case, we are not able to do things in person in any event. Yes, yes. So if you're now doing your coaching online, you can now coach anybody all over the world. Yes, yes. You know, it, it's no longer um, bringing people into your office. And you know what I'm, What excites me a lot about this um, also, Lydian, is the opportunities that it's now afforded um, the disabled community or the differently abled community. Yes. That's why we have the text on the screen, so everybody can... Yeah, because, you know, previously... A lot of you know companies or this there was this belief that we needed to have a bum on the seat to do a specific job and COVID has really taught us that a lot of it is not true um, a lot can be done remotely a lot of people are working remotely even some blue chip companies are working um, remotely a lot of our retail office staff is now working remotely things that people previously said was not possible has become possible. And I've, I've read stories of huge corporations who have, who were able to pivot in a matter of three to four days to be able to have their staff work remotely. Something people said could never, ever be done. Um, and yet COVID has changed all of that. So COVID's done a lot of good in that respect that it's created opportunities um, for the market to pivot. And the thing that excites me about this is I don't think we're ever going back to what we considered business as, as usual ever again, because we've learned so much, we've grown so much, we've created so many opportunities. Um, and I've seen people do amazing pivots um, you know, focusing on what the current needs are in the marketplace. People have gone out of their comfort zone. Um, I'm excited that using live streaming, we can now make people aware of things that they may not have been aware of earlier. You know, one of the things that that I did was create awareness of the, the water crisis we had in Cape Town, for example, um, and, you know, help raise that to a global awareness level. And even to this day now, it's, it's heartwarming when I get messages from people telling me that they look at water differently because of the live streams that they saw, because of the, um, the value of the message.
messages that I shared, you know, the people I was able to interview. So it has far reaching impact. And so, you know, if you're watching this live or you're watching this later on demand, just know that you can have a global impact if you use um, live streaming. I would never have thought, for example, for one second a couple of years ago that I would have the opportunity to be on um, international radio and, and television, which is not why I thought I'd do what I did. But that was just the, the value, you know, how valuable life streaming can be. So if you're still on the fence about its usefulness, I would say, as we said before, just be like Mike and just do it. Don't wait for the perfect time. There never is going to be a perfect time. Um, just do it. Embrace it and um, and make yourself available for business globally. Yeah. Just do it because you're afraid today, you will be afraid tomorrow. It's not going to change. You fear it's not going to go away. But when you start today, you get better tomorrow. And you know, you know, Liv, I think of the times when I started, and you probably can relate to that as well. But you know, when I started doing this five, six years ago, mm -hmm. I remember the first, I don't know, maybe the first three to six months, every time I had to hit the go live button, my heart used to stump inside my chest. <laughs> I, I had this I had this huge fear of the camera. I, I promise you, it was like my pulse was racing. My palms were sweaty. It, it still happens. It happens to me. You know? It still happens to me. <laughs> it was that for that first yeah that first sort of six months was 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 crazy. You know, I I used to literally sort of feel like there was this big boogeyman that was going to jump out of the camera and consume me. <laughs> it's like you die over and over. Next week you have to do the same. Or in a few days you have to do the same thing and have the same feeling. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> I said, why am I doing this to myself? You know, why am I doing this to myself? Um, and and now I, I, I don't, you know, it's I, – I, I, but oh. I think it was more that I had this determination that I I wanted to to do this. So you know, focus on your why. Why do you want to do this? Um, and and then you could overcome almost any everything else. Then becomes an objection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, other and anything else on top of that is just an excuse. <laughs> exactly. You know, if I would have stopped because of my accent, hello. And there is always someone who is going to overtake, who is going to find the courage to, you know, who had the same fear like you, but will have the courage to do it. So you are, you're just putting yourself behind. Just do it. Start today. Just do it. Absolutely. And as we said before, you know, put reach out in the comments if you're watching this on demand later. Let us know and uh, we'll get in touch with you and let you know how you can get started, you know, because back when we started, we didn't have as much help as we do as, as is available now. We didn't no. have the choice of platforms. No, no, we didn't no. have the choice of technology. Um, you know, things were very limited back then, but now we have, we have choice, we have knowledge, um, and we have uh, the technology is caught up with us. And so there's a lot of help out there just ask and i've never met a more amazing bunch of people than the live streaming community because everyone is willing to jump in and help, help. You know, when you need yes. when you need help everyone will help you yes. so you never need to feel like you on your own at all there's a huge community there that will assist absolutely absolutely and someone out there is waiting for you is waiting for your product your services your voice your accent your fear your worries just start. Start doing what you have to do because there is no there is no going back. All businesses, look at all big businesses, they are going live. All. All. They are because if you don't, you're literally going to get um, 
left behind, you know, yeah. um, and, and you can stand out and, and just be unique, just be you. Exactly. Don't, yeah. don't try and be Nike, you know, don't try and be BBC. Don't try and be CNN because you're not that and people don't want that. Exactly, exactly. People they have, want... They have that already, so... They have that already. <laughs> you know, just be you. Bring yourself and bring your knowledge, bring your expertise and share that. That's what people are looking for. Absolutely. And, and bring your imperfection, you know, because nobody can relate to perfect. Just be who you are and let people yeah. see what your personality is like and and um and and go from there yeah especially now now nowadays when things everyone is locked down you know do you know how many spirits are going to uplift how many people will now look up to you and say oh you're just like me you know go live, go live. yeah absolutely i can't reiterate that enough <laughs> yeah so many people i mean we're just we're the same we're just the same there is no difference. There is no frontier anymore. You have a course. You can be a dog teacher, a primary school teacher. You do your, you help kids to do their math online. Go live and explain to your students. It's so simple. It's just that simple. You know, all these uh, you, the me, they exist. But if you don't go live, how do you stand out from all those people in that community? How do you stand out? Absolutely. So bring bring your unique abilities you know um if you sell pot plants you know there may be many people out there selling pot plants yeah but yeah. what is it about you that makes you different that's what you can show people on live video and why they should buy your pot plants and not someone else's pot plants exactly um that's the ability live video um gives to you and 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 there's something else i just want to mention as well um Lillian, and and this is another problem that occurred with with Zoom. People don't realize what opportunities they could be missing mm. if they don't present themselves correctly um, online on camera. You know, what if you are not presenting yourself in a um, professional manner and i'm not talking about perfection there's a difference between professional yeah, and, yeah. And, and, being, yeah. and being perfect um but you know just think you may be promising a promotion because your boss saw you online and you are looking distracted you know your mind's somewhere else you're not present in the meeting um you know don't do things on zoom that you won't do if you were in the boardroom you know, would you be sitting there with chomping peanuts in a boardroom? Very likely not. So then don't do that on Zoom. You know, be aware that people are, um, are, are, are watching you. You know, be aware of, um, of, of your eye movements, the movements that you make on camera. Um, you know, they can either attract people to you or they can repel people. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that your online presence is going to attract people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you may have a great product or service or whatever it is, but if people see you online in a negative manner, mm -hmm. they're not going to want to buy from you. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to think, well, you don't have you don't have your stuff together. Yeah, 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 yeah. So be aware of how you present yourself on these Zoom meetings because people are taking notice. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be distracted when you uh, when you're in a Zoom meeting. Don't be texting when you're in a Zoom meeting. Um, you know, make sure that your background is is clear. Make sure you don't have rubbish in your background or laundry in your background. All those things people notice, and it's, it's, it really does detract from who you are and how seriously people are going to take you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't just go live, uh, do live videos for the sake of doing live videos. Think of what you, you, you the image you're putting out there. And it should not be as expensive as you think. 
Tip yeah. one, the simplest thing we can do, you can just take a white sheet, a bed sheet, white, you know, and have it as a background screen. You don't need to go miles and miles away to, to have a clean background. So let, don't just do it for the sake of doing it. As, as Brigitte said, be careful. Your image is at stake. People are watching. You can either, it can either really hit you badly or it can create an opportunity for you. So come join us. Come join the discussion we are going to be having each month on how to go live because the continent is lagging behind. Brigitte, how can we find you? How can we get in touch with you? Uh, people can get in touch with me. I, if you Google my name, Brigetti, I'm Brigetti on Twitter, um, Brigetti on Facebook, and you can also find me under my um, my company name, which is B Live Media. So it's B without the E. B Live Media is how, where you can find my website. Um, you can find me on Facebook, and you can also find me on LinkedIn. Um, also Brigetti. So those are the two ways in which you can find me online. Great. It was a pleasure having you. Before I let you go, I have one more video to share in case those watching now did miss the first video. Give me a few minutes, please. You have a story, a story that is unique, a story that needs to be heard, a story that people care about. So it can get them to stand up for what they believe in. It can inspire them to change. It can inspire them to take action. It can inspire them to care. Care enough to be the light to someone's darkness. Care enough to extend a helping hand to someone who's down and out. Care enough to call things the way they are and see them for what they could be. Your story can make a difference. Your story can save a life. Your story matters. One story changed the entire world. Your story could do the same. All you've got to do is own your story. Beautiful. I'll Thank make you. sure yeah. I'll make sure my story changes life. It will change lives. And so it's yours as well. It's already changing lives. Even my kids, when they hear your name, they're like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so you even you even have the next generation on your side. That's hard work to catch, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a it's been a wonderful journey so far. And you know, I have met the most amazing people online like yourself. Um that you. you know, if it wasn't for live swimming, I would I would probably not have met you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and so and so many others. And 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 one interesting story I must tell you. Many years ago, um, I started a community, and we were networking on LinkedIn. The uh, called the CIO Forum. I was you know working with CIOs and 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 people in the education sector. And um, there was a gentleman that I met back then. And, you know, due to health constraints, I, I stopped working for a couple of years. And when I started live streaming again, I came across him. And, and he has now got a, a live stream show as well. And I thought, wow. I mean, this is going back 20 years. And we'd never seen each other face to face. You know, we had this relationship only strictly on, on LinkedIn yeah. um, via conversations. And now I've had the opportunity to to create a a different kind of relationship with him using live video, you know. So it's it's amazing the opportunities that it has opened up. Uh, it's 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 amazing. There's another guy that I used to I have to check on him again. Owen, I don't know if you know of Owen, and he's he's a great live streamer, and he started live streaming because of his cancer. And he walked people to Owen, Owen Hemsat, and he's also known as Owen Video. Yes. Exactly. His videos are like, oh, he's live streaming. He's like, 
boom, and I'm like, whoa, what an energy he has. I should really get in touch and see if we can really have a live stream with him because he's he has wealth of knowledge about live streaming and he's not afraid. He captures the camera. He doesn't care and he gives his the content that he has to give and people are everybody's like, how do you do this? And he he answers just it's 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 a great it's a great community to be around like you said you don't need to know them but their story he was talking about cancer and there was another time he got a scare thinking the cancer is back again so people can relate with this thing this is life live streaming and live live things you know so yeah it's um it's a pleasure knowing you i even call you when it's not about live stream i was in spain last week and i called you and we chatted for so i'm like so you have a friend across the continent <laughs> Bus business imperfect is what it is you know there's 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 no perfection in 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 this so show your imperfect side um because that's what people can relate to absolutely rita says hello hello rita hi rita uh, Susanna says bonjour madame bonjour comment allez-vous je pense que vous êtes au sénégal je pense bonjour so yeah, the world, it's a, the live streaming is, is a fantastic place to be in and uh, we create, uh, the community is huge, huge. It's getting more and more, but we see more Americans. Now we see the Europeans. There is also very few Asians, but uh, Africa also, it's coming up more Nigerians. I see the Francophone community is not showing up at all. So the next edition of the marathon is going to be completely French speaking Africans. I'm going for it. I'm coming to get you. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. 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 Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure having you here for this complete hour and more. It's a pleasure having you as a friend that I can call at any time to ask for advice. And uh, I hope the project that we have will serve the greater community of Africa. We're giving our time and knowledge. And uh, I hope many people will seize the opportunity and uh, make things happen for that continent. So thank you so much for your generosity. A big pleasure. And I look forward to doing some more of this with you. Thank you. Thank you.